All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. We are doing a new devotional series, Foundations of the Faith. If you've been with us, I hope your foundation is getting stronger. If you think, well, I'm a seasoned saint, I don't need this, that probably means you're already leaving your foundations. And if you leave the foundation, Paul said to the Hebrews, he said, by now you ought to be teachers of the law. But you're not ready to be a teacher. We got to bring you back to the more elementary things because these things are by reason of use. All of the Bible, whether it be we're talking about building a good foundation, we talked about the Word of God, we talked about sin, and now this week we're talking about salvation. All of the Bible has to be put into practice. The book of the Word is not here for us just to hear it and become intellectuals or academics. It's so that we could become farmers, we could become soldiers, we could become prayer warriors, we could become gospel sharers, Jesus, Jesus livers, you know, living for Christ. This is what it's about. And today we're going to look at salvation and we're going to look at Acts 4 verse 12 and also John 14 verse 6. And we're talking about the doctrine of salvation. The doctrine of salvation. This is an important doctrine. I love this story um, about salvation. And when it comes to salvation, I think a lot of people get off. It was back in 1830, George Wilson was convinced of robbing the U.S. mail and was sentenced, he was convicted, excuse, excuse me, of robbing the U.S. mail, was sentenced to be hanged. President Andrew Jackson issued a pardon for Wilson, but Wilson refused to accept it. The matter went to Chief Justice Marshall, who concluded that Wilson would have to be executed. He said, and I quote, A pardon is a slip of paper, wrote Marshall, the value of which is determined by the acceptance of the person to be pardoned. If it is refused, it is no pardon. George Wilson must be hanged. For some, the pardon comes too late. For others, the pardon is not accepted. Listen, today we're going to talk about the doctrine of salvation. We're going to talk about how salvation, listen, comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Jesus, is the God-man. Now, Jesus is not his first name and Christ is his last name. His name is Yeshua. We call him Jesus. That's the Greek name. But Yeshua is Jehovah Shua, which is the Lord is salvation. The Lord is salvation. And Christ is Messiah, Mashiach, anointed one. That Jesus, Yeshua, is the coming, he's the promised Messiah. He's the fulfillment of Isaiah 53, Psalm 22. He's the fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, that, that, that the seed of woman would, would crush Satan's skull. You see, Jesus wasn't the seed of man. His father was the Lord. Uh, Mary gave birth to him. The seed of woman would crush the serpent. And it's Jesus. And that's what the Bible tells us here. Uh, this is not hidden scripture. The Bible does not speak to many roads leading to heaven. Uh, God doesn't say that. You know, we shouldn't be surprised that there's only one way. We should be surprised that there is a way to heaven, that there is a way for our sins to be forgiven. And listen to what the apostles say. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. They say, nor is there salvation in any other. So the, the first Christians, the, the apostles, right, those that had walked with Jesus as they're being challenged, Peter and John had just been arrested. They're now addressing the Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish Supreme Court. And they say, nor is there salvation in any other. So if you have a problem with that, you'll have to take it up with Peter and John. But if you don't go to heaven, you're not going to have a chance to do that. So for there is no other name. There's no other name. Now, that you could circle the word name in, in the Greek. It, it means nature. There's no other nature. There was no other man. There's no other woman. There's no other person that walked this earth holy and righteous. You know, if you just simply investigate, investigate these world religions and their leaders, you know, you wonder why uh, Jesus' true followers serve people, love people. You see around the world people being martyred, right? They're not shooting bullets back at those trying to persecute them. They're, they're willing to give up their life for the faith as all of the apostles uh, exemplified for us in scripture and in church history. But the reason why is because that's what Jesus did. That's who our leader is. He, he, in order to save the world, laid his life down. You know, you look at a world religion like Islam. 
uh, Muhammad, not only did he not lay his life down, he took thousands and thousands of lives. When you study his, the history, you know, they would go into villages if people did not receive Islam, this, this idea that, that Muhammad came up with, if they did not receive it, th there was many, many instances in history where the entire place would be killed except the women and children. They'd become, the women would become part of his harem and his other people's harems, his other leaders. Jesus, this doesn't happen. Jesus never went in and, you know, they rejected, the Pharisees rejected him. And then you see Jesus and Peter and the disciples massacre them at the Temple Mount. No, no, Jesus was massacred. He didn't massacre and that goes on and on. And, and that's what the apostles are saying here. Nor is there salvation in any other, right? For there is no other name. There's no other nature. There was no one else who was holy, who lived a sinless life under heaven, given among men by which we must be saved. And there's an emphasis there. There is no other. We must be saved by Jesus. There is no other nature. There's no other God. He is the one true and living God, and he came to save. And that word saves is the Greek word sozo. It means to rescue. It's the idea of you and I are in this choppy, cold, watery ocean. We're drowning, and he throws out the life preserver. The life preserver is in the shape of a cross, and you and I, by the grace of God, took hold of it, and he brought us to, to, to shore. And the other verse I want you to see is John chapter 14, verse 6. If you've never memorized a Bible verse, this would be a good one to memorize. John 14 verse 6, it's Jesus doing the speaking. So if you, if you say, well, the apostles were misled saying Jesus is the only way. Well, Jesus says to them, I am the way. That's ego a me. That is an I am statement similar to that of what Moses heard from God in the wilderness when God was telling Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And Moses said, but Lord, who should I say is sending me? Who, should, who is it? And he says, tell them I am that I am. I am, and Jesus said, I am, John 14, verse 6, the way. Jesus is the way. He says, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he says. No one comes to the Father except, he says, through me. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. He is the gate. He is the the way. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. So if you're listening today, you've never said yes to Jesus, say, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior right now, right now. There's nothing to fear. Jesus is here. He loves you. He's for you. And understand this. This is a foundation of the faith. We can't move from salvation through Jesus Christ alone. Can't do it. As Martin Luther said in the Protestant Reformation, solo Cristo meaning only Christ, only Jesus. So, Father, we praise you. We thank you that there is a way to heaven. For so many of us, we've received you as our Savior. And today, Jesus, help us to walk worthy of the calling we've received. And we ask it in your name, Father. Amen.